Do you want to learn how to update your test suite with Shida Matchers? Then stick around and find out how. I'm Thomas, and Bear, he's outside. We're with Braintrust Digital, and we're full stack developers obsessed with learning. If you're interested in learning full stack web development, please consider subscribing below. Also, if you have a friend who you think may be interested in this type of content, I'd really appreciate it if you consider sharing with them. In this Adibus Rails testing tutorial, we're gonna walk through the Shoulda Matchers gem by ThoughtBot. We'll walk through the entire process of updating our test suite to include the Shoulda Matchers gem. Shoulda Matchers is a gem that provides one-liners compatible with several different test suites, our spec in our case, uh, but also mini test if, if that's how you choose to set up your test suite. These one-liners allow you to quickly test functionality in your Rails application in a way that'd be much more complex had you had to write all of that test code yourself. You can test things like model relationships and validation expectations. So with that, let's get into the tutorial to learn how to update our test suite to include Shoulda Matchers. Here we are in our AWS Rails application. The first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is switch over to the terminal. Here, if we run get status, you can see we're on our main branch and we haven't done any work yet. So to get started, let's check out a new branch. Get checkout dash B for branch and then the name of our branch. In this case, we're gonna call this branch shoulda matchers. Now that we're on our new branch, the first thing I typically wanna do is run our test suite to make sure that we're passing. In this case, you can see we have errors, and I believe I broke this in the previous video where we added some validations. So let's fix this quickly before we get started. In our case, the problem is a combination of factories and faker. So in spec, factories, video, we can open up this file to see the problem. In this case, we're using the factory bot gem. If you would like to follow along, I can link the video in the card as well as the description below. Next, we abstracted some data using the faker gem. But in our case, uh, in a previous video, after we added validations, we then broke this test, but forgot to rerun the spec when cleaning up. So the fix here is pretty simple. We're just gonna switch to secure random dot hex, and then ensure we're only passing in 11 characters. Now, if we run the spec, we should be green. There we go. All right, so let's clear the screen. This is something I should have done in the previous video, uh, before committing and pushing to GitHub. Now that our spec is green, let's go ahead and get Shoulda Matchers installed. To do so, we're gonna flip over to the browser. You're gonna wanna navigate to rubygems.org. In the search, we're gonna type in Shoulda Matchers, and then this first option here is what we're looking for. We'll scroll down and click on source code. We'll go ahead and scroll down a bit to read through the documentation. In our case, we're using our spec, which we installed in a previous tutorial, so I'll link that if you'd like to follow along in the card as well as the description below. Here you can see the first step is to grab the gem. I'm just going to grab the gem line since we already have a test block in our gem file. For now, we can close this and go back to the gem file, scroll down to our test block, and then drop in the shoulda matchers gem. Next, we'll flip over to the console and type bundle install. This is going to install the shoulda matchers gem. Flipping back over to the browser, you can see the next step is to place the shoulda matchers config in the spec rails helper.rb file. So here we can grab this copy, flip over to our browser. Uh, we're gonna do this a little bit different. Shoulda matchers says you can paste this right in the rails helper file. In our factory bot tutorial, we walk through how you could place all this type of code in the spec support folder. You simply need to add this line here that includes everything in the spec support folder that ends in .rb. This is not a requirement and instead just a personal preference. I like this as it keeps the Rails helper super clean and allows you to organize all of your support code in this folder. So in this case, you can see we have a factory bot file, which includes the specifics needed for that gem. So now let's create a new file. We'll call it shoulda matchers. And then we'll paste in the code that we copied from the GitHub readme. We flip back over to the browser. That's all we have to do to install Shoulda Matchers. Obviously, if you're using a non-Rails app or mini test, 
you can follow those directions for your installation. So now let's flip back over to the terminal real quick. We'll run the spec again to ensure everything is working now that we have this new gem installed. The spec still passes. This is more of a sanity check. Uh, now as we're loading Shoulda Matchers in, had we done anything incorrectly, you might see an error at that point. But since we're still green, it looks like we're good to start using this new gem. Let's flip back over to the browser to look through the usage. Here at the top, you can see the recommended RSpec usage. And this is exactly how I use the Shoulda Matchers gem. I create a couple describe blocks for my associations and my validations, and then I place all of the tests inside those blocks. Let's flip back over to Sublime Text and get started. First, we're going to open up the video spec. I like to keep my associations and validation tests near the top of my spec. In my case, I'm going to paste this code after the before block, but before our previously created describe methods for next and previous. As you can see, I've added two describe blocks, first for associations and second for validations, just as in the GitHub example. If we open up the video model, you can see this video has many categories and also validates the title and YouTube ID are present. The YouTube ID is also validated to be unique. So if we look back at the spec, you can see here for the associations, it should have many categories. Below that in the validations, you can see us validating the presence of the title and the YouTube ID, as well as the uniqueness of the YouTube ID. That's really all there is to it. If we flip back over to the console, and then clear the screen and rerun our specs. You can see now we have nine examples and we're all still green. Just to see what a failure might look like, if we pretend, for example, that we expected videos to also have a relationship with users, and then flip back over to the terminal and rerun the spec, you can see what a failure might look like. As you can see, the test expected video to have a has many association called users but that association was not detected on the model and therefore throws an error. Obviously, we don't want that in our case. It was merely an example, so let's delete that now. Clear the screen, rerun our spec. Now let's move on to users. We'll open up the user spec, and then let's also open up the user model. As you can see, a user belongs to a role. The user model also validates the first name and last name are present. While the user does validate the profile picture with a content type, we're going to skip that for now because it'll just add a layer of complexity that we don't need for this example. One piece to note though is that that belongs to role is optional. So let's go ahead and address that now. Flipping back over to the user spec, following the same syntax as last time, if we go ahead and paste, you can see we have once again two describe blocks, one for associations and one for validations. Setting associations aside for a moment, as you can see in validations, we're validating the first and last name, just as you'd expect. For associations, you can see it should belong to a role, but that's not necessarily always the case. We want this to be optional. So before we fix this, let's go ahead and flip over to the terminal and run the spec to see how it fails. As you can see, the test expected the user to have a role, but role was unset. When you have an optional belongs to, you can simply denote that on the individual test by tagging it as dot optional. Now, if we flip back over to the terminal, rerun the spec, you can see we're all green. Back in Sublime Text, if we open up our app models, you can see that we have a couple of models that we don't have covered by any specs yet. In this case, categories and roles. So let's quickly create specs for those as well. Here in the spec models directory, we're gonna create a new file. We will name this category spec.rb. Again, we'll go ahead and paste the code and walk through it. As you can see, this is fairly similar to all of the previous examples. If you look at our category model, you can see a category has many videos. Here in our spec, you can see that we'd also like to validate the presence and uniqueness of name. So if we quickly add that in and then rerun the spec, we're all green. Finally, let's add a spec for roles. A role has many users, and in this case, we'd also like to validate the presence and uniqueness of the name on that role. So now that we've added that validation to the model, let's create the model spec. I'm going to create a new file in the spec models folder. We'll save it and name it role underscore spec dot rb. Again, we'll paste. This is going to look nearly identical to the category spec with the minor change that roles have a relationship with users. So as you can see, we have our association validations, 
should have many users, and it should also validate presence and uniqueness of name. We flip over to the terminal one last time, and then run the spec. You can see we're all passing. These are just some simple examples to serve as a primer for using shoulda matchers and adding a bit more test coverage. I think this is a great gem, but we're only scratching the surface here. Uh, there's quite a few more matchers that you could use. If we flip back over to the documentation and then scroll down, you can see the list of various matchers. There's active model matchers, active record matchers, active controller, routing matchers, and so on. And this simple tutorial is just to get you started. Now let's flip back over to the terminal, clear the screen. At this point, we're done with the shoulda matchers tutorial. Um, but I've asked in previous videos if people would like to see the, uh, uh, the full process, including pushing to GitHub and uh, deploying. Um, and somebody mentioned that they would, so I'm going to do that in this video. So if you're just here to see shoulda matchers, that portion is complete. But now that we have a passing spec, we're going to go ahead and stage our code for a commit. So in this case, we can run get status to see our changes. Typically, you're going to want to look through file by file to make sure that you're only committing changes that should be part of this commit. In our case, we're just going to blanket add everything with get add dot. Again, if we run get status, you can see all of our code is staged. Now we'll run get commit dash M for a message adds should a matchers. Then we'll run get push to push this up to GitHub, our remote repository. Now that our code is up in GitHub, this is typically when you would create a pull request and have your teammate merge. In our case, Bear is once again napping, so we're just going to go ahead and merge our code. To do so, we're going to say get checkout master to get back on the main branch of our code. Then we'll run get merge and the name of our branch. Then we'll run get push to push this merged code up. Now that all of our code is merged and up on our main branch in our remote repository, this is the point where we can deploy. Since this is just testing code, we don't actually need to deploy here, but just for the sake of being complete and thorough, let's do so now. If you'd like to watch a tutorial covering how to set up your deployment, I have one that I'll link in the card as well as the description below. Since we've already got that set up, we're just gonna go ahead and run the command. Bundle exec cap production deploy. Now that our deployment's complete, let's go ahead and quickly load the website just to make sure everything's still functioning as we expect. If we navigate to awsrails.com, you can see everything loads as we'd expect. I hope you found this useful, and if you did, if you consider subscribing, I'd really appreciate that. Also, if you would like the video, that really helps me get into the YouTube algorithm so that others can see this type of content. Please let me know if you have any other testing specific requests as I've been trying to build tutorial videos to cover this topic. And with that, I'll catch you in the next AWS Rails tutorial.